Welcome to Rule of Thirds, a program on the Screen Refresh Network where our goal every episode is to select a different topic and create a memorable list of our choices. You're welcome to shoot us a message on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Screen Refresh or shoot an email to screenrefresh at gmail.com to let us know what your top three are or even to suggest future topics. For this episode, I'm your host Nick and I'm joined by the rest of the Screen Refresh crew, Tim and Dean. Happy New Year, if it's around then. Hey. Hey. And for today's topic, we're just going over our best of for the whole year. I've never heard of a podcast doing a a year in review best of episode. It's list season. It's I mean it is. It's list season. As my friends like to say. Everybody likes to kind of make fun of like the the trope of the year in review or like the year end episodes. But those are the ones that everybody gets excited for. I know I enjoy listening and saying like, oh, yeah, so what are all the best things uh, that you're going to talk about for the year? Which I'm actually just interested in what you guys are going to talk about for year end. I kind of just sorted things out of um, like a, a like a game, a movie and a show from this year that I was just wanted to mention or just bring to people's attention. I always wanted to have a calendar where anything super viral that's happening or like i'm really into i write it down on that day so during when it's happening it's not that big of a deal it's like whatever but then when you think about it six seven eight months from then you can look back and like oh it was around this time was when you know you're doing this you were watching this you were playing that game yeah because i mean there's been times in the past year that it's like i've put in pto and taken a day off because a game's getting released the next day and i'm just excited or like i walk out of a theater and i'm just jazzed and i can't wait to go talk about it and record it and then we get to the year end and i'm like i I mean i have things here that i want to talk about that i think are good and worth talking about but all of the the energy from throughout the year of directly following that thing is not there anymore plus my memory is terrible i don't remember what i did like last week Honestly, if so, I didn't use Letterboxd, I wouldn't remember <laughs> half of the movies I watch. You know, I just, I thought about it earlier, and I was trying to think of just, what did I watch recently? And I noticed that Hulu, at least, because that was the only app that I looked at in the time that I was cared enough to research, it doesn't give you a history of what you've watched. I know I've used Hulu a lot lately. I'm like, what have I watched recently? It doesn't show. I know they used to have a a history listing, or maybe that was Netflix that had a history listing, where if you go not through the app, but to your actual account profile, you can see like a view history. YouTube has a watch history, and it should have it on all the major streaming apps, because it's like, Tim, what did you watch last week that was really good? Oh, I don't remember. And that's forever it will be forgotten. Well, I love also when they have the continue watching and it's just like it's so sporadic in what it chooses because I'll literally be watching a show, like exit and hop out of it to go do something else, and then I'll go back. That's not on my continue watching, but something that started auto playing four months ago is now like, do you want to continue Pee Wee's Big Top Adventure? And I was like, I didn't turn this on. Or it's best when it is something that you were watching, but it's nowhere near the time code. Oh, yeah. So. Yes, I I think overall 2023 has been a good year for just media in general. Um, Uh, I mean, I think most of them, most of them, most of them being them being years, (laughs) most of them (laughs) have a lot of great media. Like I was saying on last month's rule of thirds, it was so long ago for us here. Um, What one was that? (laughs) Um, uh, Like the golden age of television. kind of kicked up in 2004 and i don't think i don't think it's taken its foot off the gas uh not to i mean feature films um that's that landscape has kind of shifted with the advent of superhero films and like that disney and 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 had really changed what movie going experiences i think are nowadays but um I have a conspiracy theory, but I'm going to let you finish your thought first. I would just say television. I just think, yeah, like to Tim's point, media has been going strong. And yeah, I mean, I agree. I would agree. 2023, lots of great, lots of great things to celebrate about it as far as um, content. Do we hate the word content? And it feels like very social media. Is that reductive? Content. 
We need to load up on content, said the studio executive. I mean, I feel like usually if I use content, whether I'm doing it consciously or not, it's usually in a sarcastic way <laughs> or a mocking way. Yeah. Uh, but Nick had a thought. I feel that golden age is going to come crashing down very soon for television. Yeah. Um, Cause it's getting to the point now where TV shows used to be taboo for actors. Like, Oh, you're on TV. Ugh. You know, now TV shows have the budget of, you know, triple a blockbusters. And with everything being on a streaming platform, I think that market's going to crash within the next few years, just with the way of how everything is going. And I don't think the writer strike is going to help anything because like the last time it took a while for all the shows to kind of come back. So yeah, everything is kicking off. I'm getting like articles left and right about stranger things. Season five starting to pick back up and how the writers are like, we got this. This is going to be how it's going to start. Don't worry. We had to tweak some stuff because obviously we had to wait and all the kids are no longer kids now. But (laughs) I think by the time they get their shit together, no one's going to want to wait long enough for the next big thing. Well, I I think also the reason why TV has stopped becoming taboo for actors and um, feels more so just because movies have turned into this thing of the surefire bet is blockbusters or big budget big like names kind of deal that all the rest of it is now television or streaming network shows of okay then we're not going to be a 500 million dollar avengers movie so we're going to take a shot and do like our indie drama tv show or prestige show on like max or apple tv or something like that um but like you said i don't think that's sustainable just for the fact that the streaming services like netflix even if they have a hit show it doesn't mean that all of a sudden they rake in a ton of money because man stranger things did so well just because you have so many people watching it doesn't mean that all of a sudden you get that much more money they're already paying for your service they're already paying for your service the only way you're really getting more is by having more people sign up but that's kind of like a a finite number it's not like you're ever going to get the every human in the world signing up to netflix at some point you're going to hit the point of yeah the passive income we're getting off all the subscriptions will not continue sustaining the level and amount of shows and movies that we're cranking out for these things I can see them changing the subscription plan to renew on the first of every month and they'll make sure to drop a major release like three days before the first, just so you're forced to have to pay for two months just so you can get all the content. Well, or I see them going the route of forcing ads of like, you don't have an ad free edition. It's just, it has ads sick of advertisements yeah because that's like the only thing that they can possibly do that would be more than just the general income from new subscribers it would be okay then what ad deals can we get which i think is going to be annoying if that ends up being the case yeah i know we hate advertising but i guess it seems like everything has been built upon it and streaming was streaming was kind of breaking away from that but I don't know if it's like a, you know, we need to, we need to grow profits every year kind of situation. And like, well, advertising, having a cheaper option and advertising money will also, you know, if it's just a corporate thing that it happens that way. But I guess, yeah, I don't know where I'm going, but I just thought it's like, we hate advertisements yet. We don't get what we want without the advertisement industry. So yeah, I don't know how to feel about it. Well, I think we somebody needs to change your smoke alarm. Um, yeah, I know. I, I tried to not the... talk during it. <laughs> <laughs> it just started. It's actually it's actually my carbon monoxide detector. <laughs> oh. Guys, I'm getting sleepy. We're just going to wrap this up real quick. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I think it's not that we can never get these things without advertising. I think it's they can't churn it out while also increasing their profits for like the board and shareholders year after year 
while still doing that. I guess I that's what it really comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think it's just every business at this point, shareholders and like boards and things. It's not, wow, we're doing well. Maintain that well. It's, oh, wow, we're doing well. We need to do 30% higher next year. Well, that's great to say in like a meeting, but that's not exactly a a possible thing unless you're starting to make changes to your model, which is going to annoy some people to varying degrees. Yeah. So with all of that said, um, speaking of our complaints about streaming and all of the shows, um, does anybody have a show that they really liked from 2023? I didn't talk about it last year, but I went into the biggest deep dive with Chernobyl. That was the best 10 hours of television I'd seen in a long time. And I remember when it came out, I heard stuff, but I just didn't have HBO, so I didn't care. And then having it again, um, I rewatched the season or show because it's only, what, like five, six episodes. Um, Rewatching it, especially leading up to Oppenheimer, I went on that deep dive again of just like all the different like nuclear physics and you know the nuclear disasters his name kyle hill on uh youtube has a lot of great documentaries and uh, video essays about the whole thing and just so cool to i mean it, the whole event is tragic but it's so well done you know visually it looks amazing acting is superb and i really really enjoyed the hell out of that show and then the last episode, they do a down tempo cover of "We Didn't Start the Fire" by some like <laughs> <laughs> pop folk singer. They're like, "This trope is everywhere." Um, yeah, I mean, I've heard amazing things about Chernobyl. I didn't end up watching it when it was on, and it's not that I don't have interest. I think it's since I missed the train on it, it becomes one of those things of there's so much stuff getting added to the pile that I can't dig through the pile and then jump back to something that is like a couple years now. Uh, my ill-fated list contains Chernobyl. But it's like one of those, maybe one day I'll, I'll get around to it. Oh, the, like Tim, the, I've heard a yeah, lot the of at some point it. list. Yeah, because yeah. I think you mentioned Atlanta and I said, yeah, Atlanta at some point I have always meant to go and watch. But yeah, it's the, the rainy day list when I'm not watching 18 movies a month for shows. Um, and then other stuff. I do have yeah, to say, twenty twenty three. What, Nick? No, I was just that was a big deep dive for me when it came out. What were you saying? I was going to say twenty twenty three. Uh, Fall of the House of Usher on Netflix. It's more recent, um, but I think it's probably my favorite show of the year. If you I guys just, haven't just heard about that, yeah, I mean it's. Granted, it's Fall of the House of Usher, which very loosely follows the Poe story, Fall of the House of Usher, but then each episode within it ends up following a different Poe story within the confines of the framework they gave. So it's like... So it has nothing to do with the singer? Uh, <laughs> no, that would be the Fall of the House <laughs> of Usher, Usher. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so it's... Essentially, it's spooky succession. It's the the usher family at the top of their game and all the children uh, who are all levels of varying miserable um and something's happening that they're all getting killed off in various ways so it's this framework of the father discussing with i think it's like an attorney of fine i'll finally tell you the story of what happened and then as he's doing it, we keep jumping back to that framework of him talking about it and the history of it. And then each episode follows a different kid's death, but each kid is a different Poe story. So it's like, oh, it's this one. And it happens to tie into like the Telltale Heart or the Mask of the Red Death. So it's cool because it's like, oh, you get nine Poe stories modernized and turned into this within the confines of uh, Fall of the House of Usher. Mark, and Mark everybody Hamill that doesn't like that? Mike Flint, yeah, he is. He plays Skips. Um, no, but he. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, he's doing his Skips voice. I was watching all it, of this house um, of us. <laughs> but I, we were watching it here, uh, and I started laughing because I was like, "I love Mark Hamill," but I'm like, 
he's just doing his skips voice here. And Sony was like, I, I don't know what that is. So I just played regular show, just like the best of skips. And it almost ruined the rest of all of his scenes when he would pop up because it's like, oh my God, now I can't not hear skips as he's doing this. But yeah, like everybody, the whole cast is amazing in that show. And I know people complain about the Flanagan monologues of, oh, there's every episode that has to be some character who has this like big, dramatic, pseudo-intellectual monologue. And I am here for all of them. Very good things. I think in a perfect wrap up, of the year show i would be talking about barry season four but i haven't gotten around to it yet but i hear that i really need to finish that show have you guys seen barry oh yeah i love barry did you and you finish it this year Uh, no i uh i am two episodes from the end okay i was following and i caught up to current and then once it was like oh i have to wait for the next episode i ended up falling out of track and then getting into other stuff and i just haven't gone back to watch it it's um, a, it's one of my favorites of recent years and i know it yeah it, just, it ended this year and i really need to go back and watch it and not of course i started atlanta <laughs> so this is like personal year in review <laughs> not just what came out this year <laughs> at least for television i'm way behind on television everywhere i mean i'm sure there's listeners out there who are in the same boat of like uh yeah there's stuff that didn't come out in 2023 but i finally sat down and watched x something this year um so i did a big catch up with better call saul too i think that and that ended this year didn't it? yes last year the end of last year did they finally call him yeah (laughs) they did start calling him saul this this yeah they did the finale they're like we need to call saul and you're like yeah And then sugar, we're going down. Like, plays the booze the won't credits. get fooled again. Just kicks in. The <laughs> credits start rolling. <laughs> That's a. Did you like it? Oh yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, honestly, I feel it's almost as good, if not better, than Breaking Bad. Yeah, I would just say it's, in terms of quality. Yeah, it's not. I mean, Breaking Bad is still one of the best shows of all time, but when it comes to just because it's a spinoff you would think like oh it's a spinoff it'll never be as good as the original show that it came from like no a better call saul has different stakes that yeah he's not running meth and trying to hide it from his dea you know brother-in-law it's a whole different story but the drama and the acting like that one scene where lalo shows up you know which one i'm talking about i do and it's just the most awkward or like not awkward but it's just it pure suspense and you're at the edge of your seat like breaking bad was able to do that too but the fact that this show was able to do the same thing amazing amazing yeah i think saul is one of the best television or characters of any anything created um and bob oh i think a lot of that goes to bob odenkirk i think i could watch bob in anything he's just a he's a great actor for drama and for Mm -hmm. comedy um but yeah that that was that was a personal finishing and and loving of this year i'm trying to look up every like season one that came out this year and i'm like i don't know if i've even watched anything yeah i feel like a lot of the the new shows that are the first season uh it's either a limited series or the stuff i've been watching has been continuation seasons like the bear season two was terrific this year i Um, and i hear i thought that came out this year and i'm like oh shit that was was that 2022 that that started oh yeah the bear came out 2022 i guess i guess it takes it just gets the acclaim and then it rolls into the now yeah this year and it's like Um, yeah it's still here yeah, when we eventually get to talking about, like, uh, on an episode of favorite character arcs, there's people that I want to bring up from the bear. Um, but season two, I honestly think is better than season one, which is usually the case to me with a lot of, like, sequels or things of, okay, we got through a lot of the origin or here are the first seven episodes was everybody fighting and arguing and hating each other. And then season two is when we finally get people like working together or getting over differences kind of thing. And it's okay. I can actually enjoy this and it's not constant aggression and combat back and forth. All right. I guess I lied. I do. So I did watch a season one this year, a spinoff, uh, the Gen V, the boys spinoff. Which that is on my that list. Is I have not finished, but I think it's now finishable. I think the finale is out. Um, Any that, good? I, 
I I do like it. I mean, I love the boys. Um, and this, it I mean, it fits in with obviously it had it should fit in with the aesthetic of that show. It's the same universe. I feel like it's a little more. The writing seems a little more lowbrow. I don't know a better way to describe it. Um, maybe it's the gags. Maybe it's the lines. They just don't feel as polished or. So it sounds Sometimes more the dialogue like the comic, the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the dialogue sticks out to me like, eh, maybe it's people, maybe the writers aren't, are just maybe not great at writing kids. I mean, they're college age, but they're, I'd say they're still kids, I guess. Um, I usually wait for a show to come out and then wait for mass appeal to sway me. Unless it's a property that I definitely would have interest in, but when they announced Gen V, I that's what it's called, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I I wasn't immediately sold. I'd rather wait until the next season of The Boys comes out, but we'll see how. Uh, I guess this kind of that it's finished. I don't know if it's like you have to watch it before you watch The Boys, but I think it ties in. I think at what I heard, it ties in by the end of the. Or at least leads you into season four of The Boys or something. This happens like concurrently. It's not like a time jump, I don't think. Star Wars ruined me with that kind of thought mentality, thinking that (laughs) I have to watch this. And if I don't, I'm going to miss out and I'm going to be so hyped. And then they're not going to have a single mention of Gen V in The Boys. And if they do, it's going to be like one single sentence of a reference. And it's said under someone's breath or something. Right. So yeah. like every That's Marvel not. show they've been cranking out this year. <laughs> yeah. Like I will not be bringing up Loki season two as a best of, because to me it's unfortunately some of the most disappointing Marvel shows that I've seen this year. Oh, episodes like in that, in that season. Yeah. You mean? Cause it's well, like, I, I love the first season, the second season, like I'm watching and it's like, I'm just going to uh, Wikipedia it when it's done. <laughs> like I'm watching it now just out of just, solidarity with the previous seasons um, i watched but the first episode i felt like nothing happened that, no that's the first like four is it just is like back and forth of the same thing of like we have to stop them work together but we're working against each other but we're working together we have to catch them and i was like okay so we're four episodes in now we really haven't made any traction on anything um that i'm just disappointed in the whole thing but i mean it's it's Marvel, sometimes so if you miss take, it, you won't know what's going on. Sometimes I try to take an analytical step back, and maybe I'm missing character development and pivotal scenes that will happen that will have, you know, some kind of reference and like an obvious, like, well, all this happened, and that's why this character is acting like this later on. But so many shows have proven me, to me lately that that's not the case. And I don't know why certain scenes are happening. And it's just, it's, everyone's running amok with screenwriting, but they're not being, it, it's not like, it's not a tight enough script. And I don't get it. Well, I think it's, maybe it's a Marvel exclusive problem at the moment, but I think it's the issue of you're not writing the season because you have a story you want to tell. You're writing the season because you need some sort of sidebar bridge between what happened in the previous Marvel movies and the new Marvel movie that you need to go watch. It's, oh, well, you didn't watch Loki season two. They set up all of the villains and all of what you're going to end up dealing with. And it's like, so it's not a great story in and of itself. It's just the filler that gets rid of some of the exposition. So they don't have to do it before the next movie. I feel Marvel's already in the hot seat though. And uh, it doesn't help with the whole Jonathan Majors thing. Yeah. So it, did that is oh yeah. Well, we don't have to get into that. <laughs> I was about to ask. Well, we don't questions. know anything yet. I was gonna say I'll go like do I my mean, own research. Well, do your own between research. all the allegations. <laughs> Dean learns in real time. <laughs> just between all the allegations that he's currently having, you can tell Marvel's stuck between a rock and a hard place. Like, do we fire him? He is literally the main antagonist of the next saga. So. Like, well, we are only just starting to get into the meat and potatoes of it. Do we fire him and completely backtread on everything that we've had planned for the next 10 years? Or do we continue on and you can tell there it's that 
awkward transition that you you don't know which one they want to do. Well, Marvel realizes they have a multiverse, and somehow Jonathan Majors is just going to transition to John David Washington. <laughs> I'm still like waiting for them to re-guessed. remember they have a Mike Myers. For them to remember <laughs> they have a multiverse. I don't know. Can we talk about the rise of the penis? Excuse me. <laughs> can can we? I I brought this up. I with, mean, it, I brought this up it, with somebody. But has, has your parents not given you the talk? <laughs> You're a married man. You have a child. What happens when the penis rises? Um, what does that mean? Um, what I mean is, I know the boys, and I know Gen V. They've created oh. a thing. They have their own style and tone. And they show nudity. Mm-hmm. But I think overall, it's just an interesting observation. Like male nudity, I think, has come into films and, and mature television like in the last couple of years, like or five years or something, I think. It's just an interesting, uh, uh, I guess, uh, swing in like culture, I think you'd see. Because <laughs> it's just... Swing. I think I think Game of Thrones had a lot to do with that. Because I male think nudity? Amelia Clark, uh, I guess. yes, because Amelia Clark was very against having to constantly be naked on the show, and I know she was one of the main reasons why they kind of reeled back on that. Right. It still has a lot of nudity in the show, sure. but if you when you look at it as a whole, it's very heavy in the beginning, and it really starts to taper off to the point of almost non-existence toward the end, unless it's it's done and not in a sexual way. Like, Oh, they just stripped the person down to their skin. It's right. nothing to do with a sexual thing. It's just, they're stripping them down. Everybody is naked in yeah. the scene because they're about to be killed or enslaved, whatever. But I noticed that too, um, in a few shows that it's, it's like an equality thing, which I, I don't, as far as that, I think it started probably as more of a, like the shock thing of, oh, we're going to throw full frontal male nudity into our show because you're not expecting it. And then now it's probably turned more into a normalization thing of, well, yeah, yeah we're not going to have like one-sided nudity in this. It should be back and forth. Like if we're going to do it, there's not really, it's kind of a weird universe where you only end up seeing women naked throughout all of these things. And all of the men happen yeah. to always be like clothed or in shadow um, I like to uh, say that Hereditary kicked it off um, with the ending where it's just a bunch oh, of naked yeah. guys standing around <laughs> and everybody <laughs> said, you know what, we're ready for it. I it's And and, and to be clear, I'm not saying it's a bad thing or it's like, oh, it's I'm just a thing. Of tired of seeing these dicks. But um, <laughs> yeah, it is. It, well, um, it's, it's just an interesting so... observation. I think I don't think I've heard anybody really discuss that. Like male nudity is just like way more common, like. You would see a, di- a guy's ass in a movie or something, and you never see a dick. Yeah. yeah, we're desensitized that we expect to see a topless woman in most right. rated R movies and like some of the heavier TV shows, but to see any kind of full frontal male, it's it's I can't think of any examples except for Game of Thrones as one of the first ones. You know, Jackass, the last Jackass was was riddled that with, doesn't with count. Penis. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's intro alone with like coxzilla there's a big um gen v has at least i know there's one prominent uh featured like uh, penis. is it like the the previous season of the boys kind of scene there's like two of them honestly but may, oh, there's one that's interesting like, there's one involving yeah it's. I mean, okay. it's. It's. And usually, I feel Ooh. like a lot of it's is is in comedy. Is like a, a dude being naked or seeing his dick is. Maybe it's it's a punch, it's he- headed. <laughs> it's leaning towards comedy. It leans left towards comedy. Um, but, <laughs> 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 um, like Tim mentioned, yeah, horror like Hereditary has a very memorable naked man, like creepy, and uh, it serves the purpose of like. Oh, these these naked uh, Satanists or worshippers of Satan, I should say. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just I haven't talked about talked about that really with anybody. I thought it'd be an interesting thing to discuss because <laughs> I think it, just like seeing it in Gen V and it's just normalized. It's just an interesting thing. 
that's like, oh yeah, this is where we are now as a culture. Yeah. Equal nudity for Equal all. Equal nudity for all, yeah. Um, the last show I was just going to mention from 2023 is an uh, animated one, uh, Junji Ito's Maniac on Netflix. That's just, uh, I think it's like 10 episodes, but it's just animated versions of some of the stories from his manga. Um, so if you're into twisted, weird horror stuff, it's just a fun anthology series of like little 15-minute shorts um, that are pretty solid. Mm, manga. Never heard of it. Do you have any more shows, or do we want to move into either games or movies? You did get me to see, actually, speaking of Game of Thrones, you did get me to see House of Dragon better than I expected. Oh, uh, yeah. That was, was that last year? That was last year. But that's still, yeah. I mean, I know we're talking about old shows, too. But, um, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to remember that was last year. And yeah. that one I literally just watched a month ago, because this is a December episode. <laughs> so um yeah um yeah i just yeah you meant like pay uh, one of our good uh members here part of the screen refresh family paper as we call him from his handle um paper boy. he mentioned you know like you should uh should watch it and i'm like eh, i don't know and then it's just uh, what do you want to watch tonight oh i don't know what do what should we watch like you know paper mentioned it maybe you should watch this oh okay and then we we just did and um you didn't stop yeah it wasn't bad it wasn't bad um a lot better than i expected it to be i wouldn't recommend it to people if they're big into game of thrones <laughs> maybe why not but it's just it's it well it's just it's heavy-handed with the you know with all the different houses and the names and it helped a lot that i already knew the locations so when they mentioned like oh they're going to the veil and then this is dragonstone and uh um you know casterly rock and i i know all these things and like oh yeah we're the stocks of winterfell like i i know all this but and so you recommend you have all the different asterisk yeah okay yeah i mean if you like the high fantasy kind of stuff with and even just the original game of thrones before season six this is worth looking into because at least they have a lot more they can spread their wings so so to speak and they're able to have a lot more writing privilege that they're not locked into like you know the end is in sight how do we write this in two episodes or less when it should have been done in 15 but i digress it was pretty well done considering and the only warning i have and i mentioned it in the discord is just uh it does a lot of time jumps so you know stay on your toes with the transitions of certain characters how will have different actors portray them and it wasn't bad it was just the first few episodes i felt were not necessary in the grand scheme of the later stuff considering of just like your three episodes with them as young girl adults and then they become like 30 year olds plus and it just doesn't really i don't see a connection besides establishing relationships which is doesn't important. tell me much when yeah, but I mean, I can't base my relationship with Tim today based on what him and I did over the course of a week 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Because that's basically been life what the show did. Could have been life been, changing. But... I'll disagree with Nick on that one. But I walked it's a through good the living room during four episodes <laughs> and I cannot recommend it. <laughs> this was also the show that sparked the whole, uh, you know. Uh, what's your drink of choice which i didn't know until oh, was that the negroni was a spagliato or something like that yeah because the girl's drink of choice is who plays the older version of the princess on the show which i did not know Renary. that's the one but before more digressions so what's next diddly should do, we do movies diddly or diddly diddly change it up with do. some video juegas i mean i figure we can do games only because collectively we'll probably have a bigger discussion on movies anyway unless everybody's been playing a lot of games in 2023 i'm trying to think if i, I think played I a game in 2023 <laughs> i mean the first game i was going to mention is one i've been trying to get the two of you to play with me is Baldur's Gate 3 this year 2023 what <laughs> but yeah i mean Baldur's gate 3 it's been terrific i 
need to go back and finish it, but I just kind of fell off because I've been had been waiting for like, oh, you know what? I won't get too far in because I'll wait until we do it all as like a co-op group. Um, and then that just kind of stalled out. So then and, I just stopped playing. You know, in our defense, I don't think we'll ever be able to do that again, only because we need another you know, pandemic. As a f- <laughs> Yeah, because I was looking through my Steam library, and you can sort it by time played. You know, my top 10 is very, like, if you know me well enough, my top 10 makes complete sense. However, we all played Divinity or, or what, Divinity 3. I forget the full oh, name Divinity of Divinity 2, whatever. Original Sin. Yeah. yeah, where is it? So... In my top 10, Divinity is in the three, four, five, six. It's in the seventh slot. We played, I didn't play this game by myself. And I only played it with you guys. We have a hundred, at least 140 hours in this game <laughs> together as a group. I don't think we'll be able to do that again. <laughs> hey, I'm Especially willing to settle for escape. 10. Um, but yeah, I mean, I know a lot of people have talked about how following up Divinity 2, that Baldur's Gate, since it follows more strictly with Dungeons Dragons 5e rules, that it seems like a slowed down version from Divinity 2. But honestly, like, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I think the, the characters have been uh, fun. Tim, Tim, I would draw that statement for the full release of Baldur's Gate 3 leading up to Baldur's Gate 3 for all the times we tried playing it in the it, digression it blows my mind on how big this game became when we tried playing this joke of a attempt at making a quasi sequel to Divinity we played it what at least twice it was yeah. fucking horrible and the fact they were able to turn that around and make it into this huge game, good for them. They deserve every single award. But God damn it, was it a rocky road leading up to that day. <laughs> that's why I need to not play early access with you guys. I learned my lesson, yeah. and that's why I never reached out to you guys and be like, we all need to play Sons of the Forest. I bought it, and I'm sitting on it for a bit. Um, but yeah, like Baldur's Gate 3, at some point I want to play through whenever life finds time for all of us. Um, but anybody out there who's on the fence on Baldur's Gate 3, it's a fun single player experience. I'm sure if I had friends, it would be a fun co-op experience. <laughs> um, and I know you lose the ability from Divinity 2 of like, I can do my own self combo of 48 actions in a turn and then reset my actions. And it's like, yeah, you can't do that anymore. But also it's more fun to have to use teamwork and not just like one guy goes into a berserker rage of a 47 hit combo. And then it's the next person's turn who does like a 36 hit combo. And then the last two guys are just like finding something else to do during their night while they wait for this to finish. Can I play with a lot of fire in Baldur's Gate? Can I become a pyromancer? Yeah, you can. You can. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to. I'm going to be a water man. You can do whatever you want. Aquamancer. <laughs> water Aquaman? Man. Aquaman, sir. <laughs> I'm an Aquaman, sir. Just an Aquaman. I'm an Aquaman, so. Uh, um, so, yeah. So, Baldur's Gate 3. I played, other than NHL 23 this year, I was trying to look at a list of, like, what the hell came out here. Have you played the new Spider-Man? No, that's definitely uh, on my list because third person adventure it? action combat is my bread and butter when it comes to video games. But um Oh, did I play it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm level 39. I mean, um, I I haven't gotten through a lot of the main story. I just web sling and stop crimes. Yeah. <laughs> Have they made it so you can punch civilians yet? I really want them to incorporate that. No, but if I swing real low and then just drop onto the ground, everybody scatters and screams. <laughs> if you knock people off buildings, there's a hidden mechanic where they're immediately web slung to the side of the building so they don't just fall to their death. Oh yeah, they've done that since like the second movie, the second movie, the second the PS2 game, haven't they? It, yeah, I think so. It sometimes it ends up weird because I was fighting a guy and then that happened, but instead of web-slinging and webbing him so he's hanging down, he's hanging straight up so it looks like he's getting raptured. <laughs> and he's just getting stopped from my web. <laughs> 
The Lord is calling not me today. home. Let me go. He drank some fizzy lifting juice. I'm not done with you yet. I'm going to rub some dirt in your eye. <laughs> How'd that See get in there? <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Other than NHL 23, which is like my Madden, um, I played Mortal Kombat 1. That's the other oh, game I played yes. this year. And listeners, longtime fans of the show might know how much I love Mortal Kombat. He does love his Mortal Kombat. And I realized that love over the years. The Mortal Kombat fighting game, I mean, it's it's pretty bare bones the first couple of games as far as like fighting. What what people who enjoy fighters, I guess that was when that, that whole genre was really taking off. And Mortal Kombat, I think it, it had the you know it was the gimmick of the of the fatalities. Uppercut, what, yeah, uppercut. Oh, that's uppercut, high <laughs> kick, low kick. You can do combos, but uppercut, I mean, you sweep. Look at, uppercut, sweep. You look at Street Fighter and King of Fighters and all these other games that just have these other mechanics. And what I, I don't really care for fighters anymore because I just I I can't I don't want to spend time trying to get good at those. And there's it's so so many minute little things to master and combos and it's just like the characters is what looking bad on back on is like i love the characters and the lore that the world that the, it built and so i buy these new games whenever they come out and i play through the story and now i haven't touched it since i beat the story yeah i will pick well, it up i like the just check out some mode. more fatalities but it's the same thing with like street fighter 6 this year which i also liked is I like the ability of give me like an open world mode or give me like the invasion mode where you follow like a board game thing of you go around to different spots and do different challenges and fights of give me something that's a little bit more involved or a little bit like trick me into thinking it's a little bit more RPG than it is um, and I'll enjoy it more. Because like you said, like I... I'm past that point in my life where we'll get together after work or something and just put like four hours into Street Fighter of just like fighting and practicing. Um, I I don't have that in me, um, but I still enjoy it, just not competitively. Yeah, I don't have it in me to get good at, at fighting games. I, um, I will say Mortal Kombat 1 for Halloween had a fatality you can buy, which I didn't want to spend any money on microtransactions, but I bought the Halloween fatality where they slam the pumpkin mask onto the person. And then all of a sudden all the bugs come out and then they kick their head off onto a doorstep because it was like Halloween three season of the right. witch when they put yeah. the masks on. And, and yeah. And I was that's like, Oh cool. yeah, that's worth 1200 dragon coins. That's dope. Um, that's cool. But the mortal Kombat, Yeah. So the mortal Kombat one re reboots because they have now entered you know, essentially, Liu Kang, the last game, he gained control of time and space itself. And oh, didn't um, he become like Raiden? Yeah, he became. Well, he became more than that, I guess, essentially. But um, Super Raiden. Yeah, he's the fire god, Liu Kang, not the god of of lightning. But in this game, he they reset the time. He reset. He literally re- rewrites history to so people are more chill and there's peace between the realms. <laughs> <laughs> literally wrote a chill code free will who he also wrote chang sung's life to be like a huckster and he's like unsuccessful <laughs> so he can never realize his his um he's literally like selling like snake oil like that's and like the people like shit on him um, i i love a petty god Liu Kang. <laughs> <laughs> him and quan chi i guess you don't really see what quan chi was up to before but he makes he writes their destiny so that they don't they never realize this they become great sorcerers and start to fuck everyone over. But um of course that doesn't stay that way through the story, but it's it's a fun story. Um uh it's refreshing to see it, it like you see bad guys become good and vice versa. I feel like do you see good guys become bad? I don't think you do. Some bad guys you now are like on I mean, Liu Kang did good. strip free will from <laughs> everyone. Well, that's, but that's, it kind of goes into like, yeah, but that's, but who else is going to create the universe? If you don't do that, then. But wasn't there already a universe? They've so restarted not, the timeline. Who's got to create times. the universe? 
My big question is, there's a guy playing Shang Tsung that's not Carrie Hiroyuki Tagawa that is doing like an impersonation of Carrie Hiroyuki Tagawa's Shang Tsung. And I, I don't know, if, I never looked into why he's not playing Shang Tsung anymore. Unless it's just like yeah. a timeline thing. But like, he essentially is playing the Shang Tsung from the last game. Um, and he's he's definitely doing an impersonation, kind of like Dan Castellanata, I think tried to play the genie in the, <laughs> Shang in the Sung? Oh. <laughs> played oh, Robin the tried to Aladdin be Robin show. Williams in the in the Aladdin sequel, like it's in that vein where he's like, you look like him, you kind of sound like him as an inflection, but you're not Carrie. Like, what's the deal? I don't know. Is I don't he know. Just if he, getting old. I mean, he's not old enough to not act. I don't think, as f- as far as I know. I haven't looked. I don't know. Looked into it. That's just a weird thing where it's like it's he's the only like holdover from the last universe, but he's played by someone else. But I'm pretty sure Luke Kang is the same because why would you change it? Because it's literally the same person. Incarn incarnation of this person. Anyway, Mortal Kombat one. The the fighting was fun. Like I didn't get to see all the fatalities. Everybody starts with one, and then you gotta play the towers. I think to unlock. Yeah, unlock things. I just haven't gotten into that yet. The um the last game that I was going to mention on my side is just uh one I recommended to you a while back, Nick Dredge. Um, they have it on Steam, and I think it's on Switch now as well. But the whole thing is just you are a fisherman. You wake up in your boat, and it's damaged. You have amnesia. You end up in like this little port town that gives you a boat, um, to replace yours. And you just like go farther and farther out from port towns and do different fishing and setting like crab traps and things. And you upgrade your ship. But at night, there's like creatures and things that come out and forces on the water that you have to try to stay away from or like go back in. So it's like this weird little fishing simulator that also you're solving like Lovecraftian mysteries. Um, and it delves into all this like other wacky stuff. So. It's like a fun little casual game with a interesting like lore tidbit to it. I'll buy it. Okay. That's a sale. The end. Call me Dredge. <laughs> uh, did you have any games, Nick? Before we move on to motion pictures? Yeah, a lot actually. Okay. Thank you for your purchase. <laughs> I bought it so <clears throat> i looked through my steam history and i was trying to think like what have i done because i know i did a lot of gaming this year hogwarts legacy is probably the most emotionally impacting one for me because that one is the closest i'll get to actually living in hogwarts i don't 100 percent a lot of games usually you get far enough in and you're just like all right i'm done I got the platinum trophy for that one. That one I absolutely loved and I lived and breathed for weeks when that game came out. Absolutely loved it. And um, I really wish they did more with it. And it seems like they'll tack on. It's almost intentionally like they'll tack on all this DLC and paid crap that you can add on to a game. That's like a C plus B minus quality at best. But when they finally bring on like a super perfect, like the Homelander gift, like it was perfect, perfect (laughs) down to the last minute detail, no DLC planned, no add-ons, no nothing. Every single article that I see from release up to today mentioning anything with like, you can now use the Elder Wand. No, it's all clickbait because it's just mods people have done. So it kills me that there's nothing planned and it's almost like another alien isolation thing. We're super successful. We haven't heard anything about a sequel since. So it's really devastating to hear that, but I'm sure they are making a sequel unlike Alien Isolation, but it's just going to be a, a while before we finally get anything. So we will see. Um Dead Space was another big one, even though it it's a re-release. The Dead Space remake was extremely well done. Um, graphically, it looked great. Um, gameplay wise, they hardly they updated it enough so that it wasn't just you playing the 360 one again. 
but it was enough of a change that it kind of breathed fresh air into it and it's a very well they almost did like the resident evil approach on how when they redid two and three they just modernized it in a way that it really made it that much better i love that um aside from super graphic horror games uh dave the diver was actually one of those like weird... that's been on my list it's so good i didn't finish it but only because just other stuff came out i think Baldur's gate came out and that's when we kind of switched gears but it was so it was it's just pixelated chill game you catch fish during the daytime and then all the fish that you use get used up in sushi recipes and it becomes a restaurant simulator at night. <laughs> <laughs> Super chill. Loved it. Loved that game. Um, and then with the recent release of um, uh, Spider-Man 2, uh, that one I also platinumed. I beat the shit out of that game. I fucking loved it. Didn't <laughs> think I would. I'm very impartial to Spider-Man. I like him a lot. My Spider-Man's Tobey Maguire, and ever since then, like, newer stuff I just don't care too much about. But, dude, like, that story was so well done. I like the twist that they did to handle some of the villains. Um, You're expecting it to be this person, but it's actually that person, and the way that they set up the story and everything, really, really cool and well done with how they handled it. Um, That one I can't wait for DLC for. Well, I love the the juggling between Miles and Peter throughout the game. Yep. Of do, you, do you switch it, back and forth who you're playing as? Yeah, you do. Yes. Okay, so that's what they made. They it seem each like. have their own story beats and things that are going on, but they both intertwine throughout the game. And you can choose like as you're going through of like, okay, switch over yeah. to the other one and do stuff as them. Um, but so it's, if you only want to play as Miles, you can. And but if you get to a certain mission that requires Peter, you'll just automatically switch to Peter. You play as him, and you can switch back to Miles. And it's cool as you're like just slinging through the city, and you get into a fight with somebody that the other one will like sometimes land and just start fighting with you. As it's just like, a, oh yeah, we're both in the city. We just happen to be in the same area and take the same call. Um, and then you just like high five or something and then both of you go your separate ways again yep and that song kicks in <laughs> that's all we have for this um so bum, ba, da, bum, there's actually bum. one other game that i want to mention that um, for anybody that really loved dead cells uh previously or all of those types of games there was one i mentioned a while back from steam next fest that got released i think it's in early access um that they're working on called oblivion override where it's essentially kind of like a dead cells feel but you're getting different mech suits um, and going through and it's like you're unlocking different things for the mech and getting new weaponry and getting new abilities and things. Um, but it it is super fun. I mean, if you end up liking Dead Cells, I think you'd definitely end up liking that game. Um, plus, it just has a, a nice feel to it that I think sometimes some of the clones or reskinned versions of those types of things play a little clunky. Um, this one is fun and responsive. Dean, did you have another? Or no, I was going to transition. Have another. I was going to transition smoothly into feature films with Spider Man, but it was Books. ruined. It was totally ruined. So uh, <laughs> I started playing Spider Man One though, and it is so much slower. But I feel like I need to to catch up on some of the references because Spider Man and Miles Morales, respectively, do. It's it's stupid on how Spider Man Two is technically Spider Man Three. Yeah but that's oh, just right, the way right. that yeah would you say peter parker is more is it's his is he the main character even though he plays miles too in spider-man 2 yeah yes okay the story revolves around him because that's specifically. why specifically i guess that's why that the naming convention stays that way yeah he looks completely nice that different than Miles. from Spider-Man 1, right? He looks completely different. No, same guy. He, or the, same character model. What, Peter Parker does look different from 1. No, he doesn't. Are you sure? Yeah, because I'm playing both. Wait, hold Time on. to check. Unless it's... I'm playing the remastered one. Unless they changed it so his face looks closer to how he looks now i mean there's some like 
times progressed, so it's still the same Mary Jane. You could see that it's the same girl, but she's clearly changed like her hair. She's aged a little bit up, maybe like a year or two. It's enough to change how a person looks. It's this definitely the not the same character. This is the Peter Parker model. I remember. That is not what he looks like in the game. From the first one. Right. He they they, they I think they changed him to make him look closer to Okay, the... yeah. So you're playing the remaster, you said? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So he does look different than the original release. Because that was him in the first game. Oh yeah, no shit. Sp- Marvel Spider Man remaster on PS5 recasts Peter Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Do they use the one that's in the sequel, or is it another yet another different person? Um, I wonder. I wonder. Yeah, no, they they use the one closer. His model looks closer to the one that uh looks like in this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that makes that makes sense because so we're both right. <laughs> I didn't know that was not his original face. Yeah. Yeah, because I, originally I played the first one bef- like when it came out before the remaster. So when they had this one. I was like, oh, that's they changed this model for and I never realized they went back and updated it in the remastered. I just thought it was like, oh, from one to two, not oh yeah, we remastered it and changed the character model. I mean, I mean the remaster looks like he's Tom Holland's brother or like cousin. <laughs> it just also he doesn't look twenty five. Because it's like, oh, he looks, he's in he his mid twenties, right? and it's like, oh, you look like you're like sixteen, but yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the one on the right looks, uh, the older one looks like he does look, yeah, a bit yeah. older. Anyway, digressions. So, Dean, you were trying to lead us into movies. Yeah, because I wanted to bring up across the Spider Verse, the sequel to Into the Spider Verse. I think, right? Yeah, the first one was Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah. The animated yeah, Marvel Sony. kind of ruined Spider-Man's uh, <laughs> naming convention. No Way Home, Homecoming. I thought um, Across the Spider-Verse was one of the best movies of the year, A, and one of the best animated films I've I've seen. I know I haven't seen a lot of animation probably compared to one of you either you guys but like i just thought it was like incredible jarring whiplash endings if you don't realize that it's a part one of part two that was that's my biggest gripe with it it was like shit i didn't know that and i'm like ah fuck like it's gotta be a cliffhanger yeah like i i I think uh, i like the first better only because it has a complete arc in the movie I hate when we get like, oh, we got greenlit for two more movies. So the second movie doesn't actually have any resolution. Right. Right. Yeah, that that's my definitely the biggest slight against it. But um I, mean, I was amazed. Kick, so I think I'll finally I think I'll finally watch it probably. Oh, yeah, it's good. real good. I mean, I've heard amazing things, but it's again, it's like <laughs> I heard spectacular I things. In the, the uh <laughs> I'm just not in the right mindset to watch it. So I just haven't been, I haven't been ready yet, but I think yeah, I'm going to be soon. I looked at my buddy that, who I saw with and I, we were, I just looked and I was like, how did they do that? Like, how did they make that movie? <laughs> it just seems like the perfect, like what you say when film is a, and this kind of media is a, it's a collaboration between people. I'm like, it took a lot of people, I think, to make this movie and oh, vision yeah. and like it's it's like I think it's, it's yeah, not it's rushed. A spectacle. That's another no, big yeah. thing too. And you know, I hate to cobble this in with other Marvel stuff, but I mean Marvel has it coming. They're clearly just mass producing these with the lowest bidder possible and trying to spend as little money as and to get this done as quickly as possible and they're not taking the time anymore to really put that heart into it and from what i've gathered from the spider-verse sequel is that they did take the time to make this properly they did take the time to make sure that it's a tight written story and it's a good story not just a good spider-man story but just a good story and that's what i feel a lot of these universe movies are really missing out on is that just because you have an ip does it translate to a good story if you were to swap out all the characters to something else 
it's um it's it is a good story and i think it's very well written and the pace is fast without being it's not jarring to me um i was on board with the kind of pace that it moves at I think that I mean that pace really applies to action scenes. Like there's a lot going on, but it's very trackable and you and um, not Michael Bay's Transformers ish. Um, <laughs> with what you can't realize what's going on, on screen. But there's so many lines. Like it's very tight. It's very tight. Uh, the yeah. lines, the quips, just like yeah. I just think it's one of the best movies of the year. De- definitely all top the Spider-Man top Easter animated. eggs. What's that? All the Spider-Man Easter eggs of just like random one-off Spider-Man. Yes. From, it's like, oh, hey, that's the one from the animated series. <laughs> oh, hey, that's the one from like uh, Ultimate or Spectacular Spider-Man from like mid-2000s. There's Spider-Woman that's you know, actually a hulking robot lady. That's very the, tall. Um, Cyborg Spider-Man? Is Spider- that Spider-Woman? Anyway. S- s- playing Spider-Man 2... Um, it kind of hit home because like you always constantly see like, you know, South Park joked about like the Pandaverse and, you know, it's always pandering to different nationalities. And this was the first time I realized like Spider-Man 2 is finally like it's my turn because Miles is Puerto Rican or like half Puerto Rican. And every single time I see Latin representation, it's usually like Mexican and like it's not something that like I'll ever like whenever I see Mexican representation, I'm like good for you guys. And I never really think anything of it. It's just like, it just kind of translates to Hispanic heritage. Just, just like blanket, like just Latin, like, Hey, they're acknowledging Hispanics. Right. This one's always like, for about, all. like, yeah. And in this case, it's like something happens in the second game and it's so trivial, but like it fucking hit me like a truck, like, Holy shit, this kid's Puerto Rican. And like, Oh yeah. And then the whole rest of the game, like I make sure that whenever I'm playing as Miles, he gets a suit that has the Puerto Rican flag on it's it. It's a cool suit. Like hell yeah. That's the one that I'm gonna be using. So then <laughs> I didn't know that. When I know there's a few scenes in the movie specifically that it's just kind of harkens back to his Hispanic heritage. Like I wanna watch it more now because I know and have that fully like at first I just Peter Parker's the OG, you know, but like, I'm really, really appreciating miles for who he is as his own character. Yeah. And I'm really excited more now to get into that now fully letting go that it's just, this is a whole different Spider-Man and I'm all for it now. That's my Ted talk. That's your Ted talk. <laughs> I'm glad I, I'm glad I viewed. Yeah. So that was the one movie Dean watched this year. Um, (laughs) I will mention, uh, I think actually, did we see this together today? Dungeons and Dragons. That was really good. It was surprisingly good. It should not have been as good as it was. Yeah, after the the original one that got released, I had a very low bar. And I think this was very fun. um, Hit all the notes that I wanted. It could have gone deep into like guardians territory of the marvel like jokes and all of that and i think there was humor in this without ever being like it didn't stupid follow the throwaway marvel, marvel it humor yeah i, I yeah. said about this movie that like this is what marvel wishes it was doing again or, or, or has lost like it's 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 yeah. they it's lost. not doing they it, well they... anymore dungeons and dragons is it yeah so even if you're not a Dungeons and Dragons fan, it's a fun movie just as a fantasy adventure. But I'm I'm definitely excited for if they churn out um, a sequel of some I wa- sort. I watched that again um, with, uh, within the last month for the second time. I saw it in theaters and then just again just recently. And yeah, it's, it's it's really fun, fun movie with heart. With got heart, me, got me choked up by the end. You know. Um. I will briefly mention I finally watched John Wick 4. Um, I haven't after... watched that yet. I'd seen the first three and I just didn't get around to four. And then finally we're like, it's time. We need to watch this. So we banged <laughs> out one through three last week. And then we sat down last night and watched four. Oh, you did a rewatch. Um, we did a rewatch. And it was worth it. It's I love all those movies. And I think four is super fun. Um, I think it ends the john wick saga well um as far as where they leave everything off um 
I know they're talking about spinoffs and maybe like a five and something like that, but I think four kind of puts a nice button on where it started. Um, so let me so let me ask: Did she like it, or do you owe her four rom coms now? <laughs> no, she loves the John Wick movies. Oh, that's awesome! Does she? Yeah. Cool. Good for that so. lady, that woman that likes action movies. Yeah, <laughs> they're not for her, but I'm glad she likes them. Yeah, we were uh, doing a Keanu thon for a bit there. So we'll probably it's a lot to take in if it's not your primary genre. Oh no, it's like I, hyper you're, hyper violence. I wasn't putting well, anything towards you. It's just by I the had time the same they thought. get to the like by the time they get to the fourth movie, they have their act down so well that it's like, what is the coolest way we can shoot every single one of these scenes and every like in the head. I can grab any frame from the fourth movie and just be like, oh yeah, I would just put this on a wall. Like this just looks cool. Cool. Oh, with the yeah. camera. Yeah, I guess that works too. <laughs> um, does it feel like, do, do you feel, watching them all back to back, does the fourth one feel, I'm thinking of the Fast and the Furious franchise or like um, Mission Impossible, where it's like it feels like they have to kind of up the ante or do something bigger than last year? Or did, did, did the fourth one feel like, well, they did some crazy things that they didn't reach in the previous three movies. Um, I mean, I think it's, yeah, there's some increase to, I mean, as the films go on, they get a little bit more ridiculous than the previous ones. Because <laughs> at, at one point in the series, they kind of discuss like, oh, the the suit has like a, a Kevlar lining to it. And then by the fourth movie, it's like, oh, we've, have like the the perfected version of that so he's literally like getting shot at and he grabs his jacket and holds like one side up to block a shot and then he runs after a guy and it's like okay so we're just assuming that you're not taking any blunt force trauma from this and you're just like (laughs) running down like using this as like your three-piece shield um but yeah like it's it's never to a point where um it jumps the shark so to speak there's certainly stuff that you would have to assume like oh yeah like how is this guy not dead at this point um (laughs) but i think because they do it in a cool way and you like the characters that you're just rolling along with it of like yeah this is cool give me more and not at any point where i'm rolling my eyes of like oh you're kidding me right now (laughs) speaking of uh action and mission impossible specifically i did you guys see dead reckoning not yet it's on my list oh it has i would say the finale action piece there's there's a lot there's lots of really good set pieces in it as to be expected but the finale was probably one of the most a it's like a tense and b i wish i was on set seeing how they filmed this like kind of and it's very it's funny it's one of the most contained set pieces as far as like they're not they're not there's not a chase. There's not a bunch of stuff going on. You'll see when I when you when you get to it. But um, uh, they actually launched Tom Cruise into space. <laughs> like I'm just waiting um, as he does like more and, and well more done. crazy stunts. They're gonna be like, oh, the the finale to the last Mission Impossible. We built the actual telepods that Brundle made in the fly, and Tom Cruise is gonna walk <laughs> through them with a fly and see if he mutates. <laughs> um, with a copy yeah. of. Uh, people's magazine sexiest it's, man alive just kind of imagine uh the lost world um <laughs> wait, hanging wait. off the cliff hanging off re- wait oh <laughs> not, not the, the dinosaur the part <laughs> tom cruise gets released <laughs> in downtown burbank and he's just stomping <laughs> through people's pools <laughs> mommy ethan's no. grown too strong it's like the the tension of the cliff scene um, in the Lost World, but oh yeah, just ramped up. Hmm. Yeah, I um, definitely need to see that. We did a rewatch leading up, and then we just didn't watch the new one. <laughs> it's good. It's worth. I mean, it's like the fa- I mean, it's like the Fast and the Furious. If you like it, it's more of the same, and it's as entertaining as the other ones. Like. Also this year, Fast X. If you liked the previous Fast and the Furious movies, you I haven't will caught that probably yet. just like Fast X. Um, <laughs> I haven't caught that yet. I think Jason Momoa plays a really fun, 
wacky villain in this. Um, he's in his like, I'm having a lot of fun in this role era. Um, and I hope to see that just continued. Because I'm like, oh, he has like weird Joker energy in this. Um, <laughs> but not like intriguing. any sort of but not any sort of like dark gritty like Nolan verse kind of Joker. It's like no, he's just like animated series Joker in this movie. <laughs> I was uh, nervous about his performance because when John Cena was in the last one, I thought that one was pretty weak. I was on my phone almost the entire time. John Cena is fun just, in this one. Is he? Yeah. I love him as an actor and just it was no no slight against him. It was just the story itself. It's just it didn't capture me like the other yeah. fast movies. My I, favorite I think part the, of the oh god. I was gonna say I think the issue in nine is John Cena I don't see doing well as a serious, deliberate villain when they move him over to like change sides and now it's like, okay, so your whole role in this movie is going to be finding and protecting Dom's kid. Um, and it's just, he's palling around with a kid as the B story. And it's like, okay, this is fun. John Cena, um, that you are excited for all of his scenes. Cause it's like, okay, this makes more sense. The best part of nine is when Dom tears down chains and metal with his bare hands and like destroys a building barehanded. I still love in what was it, seven when he's fighting at the end of the movie and he's like the thing about a street fight a street fights back and he just like stomps the he ground st- he stomps the <laughs> he parking garage to the stomps <laughs> yeah he stomps the parking garage and the floor caves out and you're like good god if you had that in you why are you even using like guns and cars that's that's Chris Redfield punching a boulder level kind yeah of just <laughs> And as ridiculous it's, as I guess it is, it's played as like, oh, everything's crumbling, and he just gave it his his big yeah, just needed extra the oomph, but still, like that's that that's uh, a lot Power of oomph. family. He knows how to put his foot down. <laughs> he holds both hands in the air and summons a spirit bomb. All the rest of the cast, we give you our energy, Dom. <laughs> And now back to you. I have three movies to roll through, so go ahead. You, oh, I, I didn't have any particular. You still have three? Like I said. <laughs> well, two quick ones and one that I think is just a little bit longer. Well, my my first one, um, little movie that came out last year, but I'm including it because we didn't talk about it at all, it was the Weird Al movie. That was fun. Oh, I shit. Was I was very... You didn't see it? I didn't it's see it. so good. Um, definitely went under the radar. Um, I mean, they advertised it a lot when it came out, but I'm not even a Weird Al fan. Like, I like like his movies. His, his music's okay, but I don't listen to him at all. And just the way that Radcliffe was able to portray him and the fact that they intentionally... It, it starts off like you're thinking that it's going to be this real like biopic like you know um uh bohemian rhapsody or you know rocket man but you clearly tell like they're just pulling your chain the whole movie and especially the way that it ended is fucking hilarious yeah um totally worth watching even as a comedy i really really enjoyed it and did not expect it to be nearly as good as it was I am completely uh, here for Daniel Radcliffe to just do his post Harry Potter, choose any role that I think sounds fun now, like oh, Guns yeah. Akimbo or this or any of his other ones. It's like, yeah, I've made my money. I don't need to be doing this. So now I'm just going to do anything that I feel like is just going to be cool as an actor. Mm-hmm. Work um, Was it called Workers portal? or something, too, that he's on? Oh, Miracle um, yeah. Workers. Miracle Workers. And supposedly yep. there's rumors of him being Wolverine that he keeps trying to dispel. And they're like, then why are you just ripped now? <laughs> He's always been ripped. Hasn't he? I, I don't know. <laughs> At the end of an Deathly Hollows Part 2. I think. He's, he's an odd Wolverine. No, he's, if I he's can't beat be you with this wand, guy. you're about to catch these hands, Voldemort. I know he's supposed to be small, but like... I, I think it's his face. Like he's not not I just don't think he has the right face to be 
it just doesn't scream Wolverine to me. I don't know. Yeah, I think just because Hugh Jackman did such a good job, everybody just imagines Hugh Jackman esque characters as Wolverine. It's like he's like a small, hairy <laughs> yeah. Canadian in the comics. Yeah, I know he's yeah. small, but he's fucking stocky and like. Yeah, give us like a Bob Hoskins. <laughs> Everybody's got tap water. <laughs> Oi. Um, what else was really good this year? Elemental, I was surprised on how good it was. Um, it's the last Pixar movie that came out. Um, I really enjoyed that one. The last few I skipped out on and just wasn't feeling it. This one was pretty enjoyable to watch from start to finish. And I liked how it's not even really a spoiler, but there's no like this movie's not going to make you pour your eyes out within the first 30 seconds of watching it. And they actually kind of poke fun at that because the guy's family is like the family of criers. They cry at everything like, Oh, this was like, you know, the first day that he moved out from high school or whatever, or like, you know, first, like first day on the job and everyone's just so happy for him. They're all crying, but they really kind of ramp it up. So I think that was kind of a fun kind of thing that they poked at. And then um, I think the last thing that I watched that I really, really enjoyed was uh slother house you watch slother house yeah that's really good it's on my list because for don't open we're going to also do the the year in review for all horror movies and shows for 2023 so slother house i'm is on my list to watch to talk about um i was not expecting you to watch it i i am capable of things um (laughs) I mean, we saw it Evil was, Dead Rise together. Well, you dragged me to that one, but I mean, it wasn't bad. I liked it. I mean, I gave it, I'm looking at my letterbox trying to remember all the fucking movies I watched that I don't remember that I watched recently. And um, at least like I gave Evil Dead Rise the same rank as Slaughterhouse. They both are three stars <laughs> and I put a heart next to it. I think that's, that's fair. That means a lot. Like yeah. I know I went higher on Evil Dead Rise, but I think three is definitely a a fair assessment especially if you're not like specifically an evil dead fan it's just watching it as a moviegoer um i'll talk more about all that on the other show i won't bog this down with horror um and my my ranking two out of five stars one star means that you had a fucking camera on set (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like a legit camera two stars means that you also had good sound editing and then from there on it's like um or like no um you had like two stars is the worst that you can possibly get for being like a triple a movie kind of thing like you have big actors you have the people that know what they're doing behind the scenes whereas a one star does not have people that know what they're doing behind the scenes so this would be like Birdemic would get like a one star, you know? Yeah. Usually I think of it as a two and a half star is the the middle ground of I did not enjoy this, but I do not consider that my time was wasted. Anything lower than two and a half is like, yeah, I feel like this is time wasted that I could have spent elsewhere. And if it's a half star on Letterbox, it means I shut it off. I just decided like, no, this is I. I have such limited free time. I cannot spend eighty minutes watching this. My lowest scored is um, but um, recently my lowest scores is Paint with one star. Um, Asteroid City got a star and a half, and um, what was the third one? There was a third one, and You People got two and a half stars. Those were my most you recent. You don't like Wes Anderson, do you? I do. Oh, you do? Yeah. I felt the movie was extremely pretentious. I didn't see it. It very it looked down at the viewer, and it was so Wes Anderson, it fucking hurt. Wait, Asteroid <laughs> like City? That. Yeah. It, I did not like it <clears throat> whatsoever. I didn't know there was a third Magic Mike movie. Oh, yeah, Magic Mike's Last yeah. Dance? <laughs> I just learned that. I didn't see any of them, but... um. Dean, have you seen They Cloned Tyrone on Netflix? No. I I th- think you would like that. It's um it's wacky. It's like this weird science fiction like 
mystery crime comedy um like do you, you end up seeing um oh god um what's the the movie that came out a couple Keith years ago i haven't Keith. seen him personally the one that came out a while. couple years ago with lake keith stanfield um thank you for whatever it was i did not see yeah, that i think metal gear i know what you're I talking think metal about metal gear five was the last thing that he did that i remember oh Kiefer. and that was like five years um, ago yeah thank you yeah, i know what you're i know what you're re- referencing i did not see that sorry to bother you sorry to bother you yeah i knew what you were talking um, about but yeah in in the same vein as that where it's like this weird hyper surrealistic version of modern times um but it ends up getting into some weird territory of john boyega as just like a um i think he's like a a gang member or he's like a a criminal and getting involved in stuff and then it's like oh he dies and then wakes up as a clone and then they end up finding out all this like weird underground cloning operation controlling cities and things like that that it by the end of it it goes into crazy weird sci-fi territory (laughs) um that i think is spoiled everything funny throughout i mean the name of the movie is they cloned tyrone (laughs) um but who are they you know Um, they yeah yeah i feel like i this is one thing that's like oh i heard about this cut that out never mind i have no good thought there don't use that so and that yeah check out check out they clone tyrone i think you'd find it fun the lighthouse was really good Wait, what? With Pattinson and Willem you like that movie? I did. Damn, Wasn't I would like not. 21? Have, I would not have pegged that as a Nick movie. I'm very surprised. I haven't even seen it yet. I enjoyed it. I I think they're both, especially Willem Dafoe, are fucking just amazing to watch in that movie. They're both really both entertaining. actors are amazing. Yeah. So yeah, the fact that the, you know, I love the concept and the whole thing i honestly expected it to become a lovecraft story at some point but i, I like the um, director i mean it, yeah i still haven't watched kind of did film, but it didn't but... or that's good um yeah, it's john wick but with vikings right <laughs> <laughs> it's not wrong did anybody watch the adults i've heard a little bit about that but i haven't yeah. seen sarah and anything worthwhile in a while Mm-mm. other than barbie 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 was good barbie was the last movie on my list i was gonna mention yeah barbie is um i'm really sick of the male hate for that movie or like just men in general shitting on that movie it's one of the best movies i've seen this year if not the best uh that's the the last movie i had was just discussing barbie i mean there a bunch there's a bunch of other movies but i figured that's the for the sake of time, that's the 2023 stuff that I just wanted to mention to yeah. viewers. This listeners. is back to our. I mean, I, it's, mean, I guess it's a list. It's it's a recap episode, but it's like we're back to the yeah, old. So I'm back to, to the old episodes. I don't mind it being running longer because it's literally our last one of the year. So I'm just going through my letterbox trying to think of anything that uh, definitely see I had seen recently. Flowers of the Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, flowers of the killer moon. <laughs> flowers of the killer moon watch out that moon it's a good movie it's solid it's brutal it's long it's Mar- marty is like just making long movies now it's, it's fine it's uh, it's good five nights it's, at freddy's was fun it's, i didn't yeah, like that one i didn't like that Martin's that one I, you know yeah wait what <laughs> i didn't mind it at first and the more just seeing and hearing other people talk about it it's growing on me because I thought it was fine, and like my initial reaction was like, "It's okay. You'll like it more if you enjoyed the game." And the more people are like deep diving into it, they t- they treated this movie with a lot of respect. It's it looks like, so the fact that they were able to do so much for it, and I just wasn't in the know for most of it. Yeah, I'm starting to appreciate it just that much more because I didn't know any of the lore behind the like. I played the games, but I played like you know a couple hours worth i didn't beat any of them but i was familiar with the the content before the movie came out so it was interesting and now i'm like you know this one might be like the the top one of the to close out the year for me yeah i'd be remiss I will, if i didn't just oh go ahead 
I was going to say, I will also mention briefly, I thought 65 was a fun movie, if it, like, a flawed but fun movie. God, that was this year? That was this year. I know uh, Dean's, like, that... grimacing on the other side, but it's like, it. for everybody saying <laughs> it's one of the worst movies we've had in decades, and it's like, no. No. <laughs> if that's the case, watch more movies. I think everybody hyped this up in their head probably more, but as just a throwaway like I, sci-fi yeah. dinosaur adventure, I think it was a perfectly entertaining movie for 90 I, minutes. I didn't have a lot of hype for yeah. it based on the trailer, and it didn't live up to that. Um, I mean, it's I, no Killers of the Flower Moon. <laughs> what if I it wish had there was 90 more dinosaurs more in it. For sure. I think that was my only gripe. More dinosaurs? more i but also i fell asleep so i might have missed a lot of them so I, yeah it just i mean that's usually the big takeaway is like did i did nick fall asleep through the movie that he paid 20 dollars plus to see it's usually i i fall asleep through more than i would like to admit but that one was definitely one of them but i do remember i didn't see enough dinosaurs in it adam adam driver's back was broken from trying to carry that that movie i thought absolutely he was good but yeah i didn't like i didn't like much about it um the uh the new turtle movie was i enjoyed i know that is a very yeah want to see dean grimace (laughs) that's the movie to bring up i like that movie better the second time i watched it but it's still it was overshadowed a lot by across the spider verse for me because i was so blown away by that movie i'm like animation can yeah. be this for kids and then the turtles i was just like yeah it's just this ain't it um it's i don't know it's like oh we'll see what they do with the sequel but it's like well how often is a sequel better than the first movie not very often and if God's it's better is it just Empire gonna be more of the back? same that i don't like or terminator 2 yeah but how often i said <laughs> Yes, it happens. <laughs> yeah, it's, Let's say it doesn't it's not happen. often. Um, uh, if it's more the same, I'll be like, uh, okay. I don't know. It, it obviously that's a big property for me too, and it. I, mean, I don't even know if do, do kids love it or is it sweeping the nation with children? I don't know because it's made for kids. That's for sure. Dean, you are the only person that I know that did not like the movie. Everyone else raged about it almost as much Dude, as Spider Verse. Everybody on the the turtle groups I'm a part of, not everybody. There are dissenters <laughs> like myself, but there's a lot of love for it. And I'm like, okay, great, but it's it's it just didn't. Strike, I love that you're part of turtle groups. Turtle groups, baby. Well, for collecting, ex- it's it's collecting turtle collectors. Our turtle on Reddit. <laughs> You are experiencing the same kind of trauma that Star Wars fans have every single time Disney pumps out something new. Right. I mean, just the fact That's that during our so- show section, none of you mentioned Ahsoka at all. I didn't see it. I haven't seen a lot of the, re- other than Andor, I haven't seen a lot of the recent s- sequel series and new series. I mean, it- they can serve a show literally about a plate of Star Wars shit. I will fucking watch it. I mean, I'm going to watch it regardless because of just my childhood obsession with this franchise. But a lot of the stuff I can't recommend to people because I, even I think it's like, this isn't good. Hey, like but, it had I some mean, cool. It had moments. Star Wars sure. got Andor and I'm like, I was fucking blown away by that television show. I know, but I mean, that's the problem. It's like the, the, the problem I have with Star Wars is the writing because writer strike aside, this storyline just wrapped. We're not going to get any continuance for it for at least two years, at least minimum, minimum three, I think would be a better time frame for that. Three years from this storyline, we have two Star Wars shows confirmed to be coming out within the next year, and we have nothing else after that in terms of what's currently happening with the Ahsoka Mando universe. So it's like, the fuck's the point? Cool. We have this big-ass cliffhanger that we probably won't even get a sequel or ending to for... I'm going to be 40 by the time it comes out. Like that's GTA seven is going to come out before we get something else. And we're still working on six turtles. Turtles fans so. get a movie every five years. 
Um, you gotta pass the torch, man. Pass the torch. Let nah. the kids hype up and love it so no. you can get more. I yeah, mean, okay. as far oh, as yeah, no, that's that were... that's the best thing about it is that it's keeping turtles alive, but they're still not gonna make what I want ever. No, that's okay. As far as things that were hyped that disappointed me, um, which was to be expected, the Flash movie this year. It was better than I was expecting, but that was only because they cherry picked some of the best emotional beats from um, Flashpoint, the comic, and all of that, and ham fisted slammed it into this story, um, which is disappointing for them to be like, okay, so we really haven't spent a lot of time with Barry Allen. Let's give him his entire emotional arc for years from the comics in two hours. What kills me is they still have Ezra Miller and they're literally dealing with a character that's able to jump universes and they have the easiest out to recast him and they still don't. Yeah. They could have kept the movie entirely the same, but just had a single 20 second scene that they could have shot in the guy's backyard, which I think they did at one point <sighs> in front of a green screen using an iPhone or some lame crap like that. You can easily recast him in a multi-universe sort of thing. No one would bat an eye, and they still kept him. And I think that's one of their biggest problems. And what do like, you mean? Boom, when when they've done that, though, I don't. It doesn't matter. He deals with the multi-universe. So just at any point. I just mean the problems came about when they he was already filming the whole movie, right? Well, I don't know because they they've been filming this for so long. Didn't it have like complications and it? kind of stagnated the whole um production probably knowing that i don't remember movies. i mean they could have just had him like running fast slip on a rock twist his ankle and then batman has to shoot him <laughs> and there's just like he'll never run again it won't heal right we're sorry barry and all of a sudden a portal opens up and another barry runs out and you're like thank you unproblematic barry welcome I mean, I can do that now. I just meant for the Flash movie. It's like he's in the entire <laughs> That's a post movie. credit scene. <laughs> just an epilogue they tack on. I did enjoy seeing Keaton again. Um, yeah. I did not enjoy them reusing lines in a dumb way of his, but um, I mean, I did, that's like, all the him, stupid fan him kick service ass as of just Batman like, in Russia. He said the words. Like, <laughs> I'm Batman. Yeah, I'm Batman. Like, come on. Like, I would have liked it better if they used the want to get nuts line, if they're, like, meeting up to discuss what they're going to do about Zod at a circus. Yeah, and he's that like, one felt I'm going to really grab flat. a snack. And he's like, oh. can we get nuts? You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. And I would be like, oh, that would be a much better usage. <laughs> that would have been funny. Because it's but literal like, now. They fell really flat, like, using those old lines. Um, but seeing him clean up in Russia when they go to Russia was like, oh, yeah, this was awesome. Yeah. So. And I'm the only person in the world who really enjoyed the opening action piece in Flash would. with the babies. You I loved would. it. It looked terrible, but like the concept and everything, I, I was I was on board for it. I mean, it's, the movie was pretty easy to digest once you just kind of got that out of the way immediately. Like, oh, this movie's gonna look like shit for CGI, and then the whole rest of it was pretty easy to swallow. I'll admit. I mean, the opening scene felt like somebody watched the Quicksilver sequence from X-Men Days of Future Past, and they're like, I just want to do that. That's what we need here at DC. And they wrote <laughs> that scene. I, I love, don't know. I think they I also the just don't thing. know how to... I don't think they know how to handle super speed yet. I mean... It's, and it's just another Marvel formula that they don't know how to creatively do on their I, own. I... Sorry, go ahead, Tim. I, have a I was going to say, it, it's mainly speed. because super speed as a power is a cinematic problem. Um, yeah. Just because, like, I love The Flash. I grew up on Barry Allen and Wally West. Like, I've been reading the comics for two decades. But my issue is when you actually have them using the speed that they have, it trivializes everything that can possibly happen on screen of he has a gun and they do a sequence of like oh he's running in slow motion trying to stop bullets it's like this guy can literally vibrate fast enough to move through objects you mean to tell me that if he thinks about stopping a guy from even starting to pull a gun out of a holster he can't just do it instantly i mean did, but, did they run into that situation no it's just variations of things like that that it's like oh he's fighting so-and-so okay then 
literally he can move faster than everybody in this room can think. So why are we all of a sudden having it be a a problem or we have to introduce a reason why he can't of like, well, their guys are coming. Batman, stop them because I'm really hungry and tired. And it's like, oh, okay. I mean, literally in like the old shows, he fought, I think it was um, Lex Luthor or Darkseid or somebody where he was literally running around the earth to pick up speed to throw a punch on the guy. And he was just doing that multiple times in a single fight sequence. And it's like, so he can do that, but then you have to dumb it down for this. I I guess I want to say about the... I had the feeling... I haven't gone back and watched the movie again, but the his power and his fighting in the actual action sequences, I think, is some of the most entertaining that the DC Universe has done, like, in this era. I don't know. I find the, the, the actual fighting in with his speed, like, when, when they're both teaming up at the end, especially, I mean, is, like, really entertaining to me. It yeah. just kills me when he runs. I feel there's so many different ways you can show off someone running and just the way that Ezra Miller decides to do his super speed run is just <laughs> well, they kind of make fun of it in the almost movie too. comical yeah yeah I mean the, the seeing it in action as far as like the fight sequences it is fun it's just as a a long time it's just yeah, yeah it's just kind of disappointing to be like yeah like you really always have to find a reason to power dampen mean. him for some sequences uh which i get because i mean like otherwise i i can't think of it i complain about it but i can't think of a solution of like how do you have a guy who's that possible fast um have any sort of problem with anything in this universe i guess that's why it's the story he's having trouble with his powers i don't know so that's 2023 2023 bye lots happened this year (laughs) See ya. And that's it for this year. Remember, you can reach us on all the big social media sites at Screen Refresh or email us at screenrefresh at gmail.com so we can hear what your top three choices would be or any other topics you want to hear us talk about or how just your year wrapped up. And that wraps... (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. I am struggling. (laughs) Well, because your mic cut out on my side, it was like, okay, well, that's the year. (laughs) It just end like the Sopranos. Don't stop. That concludes this year's final rule of thirds. And as always, we will be back next year. Uh, and you can still reach us at Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Screen Refresh. Or shoot us an email at ScreenRefresh at gmail.com to let us know what your top three would be or any topics you'd hear us discuss. Didn't I just say this? It's going to be a fun edit. You could always re-record it later. You know. I Probably. Also, we have a Discord. I keep forgetting to update the invite link, but I have permanently fixed that now. I promise this Discord is now a community, so you can easily find it and come on in. Um, we're all extremely active on there and would love to talk our favorite movies, games, or whatever else that may come up. And maybe you can even beat Tim's 300-plus hot streak in Framed. Please, someone dethrone him. It's... It's a problem. I've moved on He's to harder good. stuff now. Fight me on grids. So for Tim and Dean, this is Nick. You can take care of yourself, and you can catch us next on Screen Refresh, airing every first Monday of the month, and also our sister podcast, Don't Open This Podcast, every second and fourth Monday of the month. <laughs>